The SEC is completely screwing individuals out of participation within this market. It has nothing to do with innovation. It has everything to do with the rich getting richer, and they do not want to see you move up outside of one asset class, up or down throughout your lifetime. So we're going to get into this a little bit today. Um, this Celsius news is kind of the catalyst for that. Um, apologize for my voice today. I lost my voice a little bit this morning, but first and foremost, I wanted to get into this. We saw a ton of stuff about Strike and the Shopify integration and, you know, kind of a lot of the Lightning Network and Bitcoin maximalists uh, talking about essentially, you know, this Lightning Network uh, removing the entire use or necessity for something like XRP, a neutral bridge asset, et cetera, et cetera. Well, Ashish Birla touched on this yesterday, and I wanted to read through this because I think it's really valuable. I also have giant news coming out of DTCC today. Um, so Ashish putting out... Seeing some tweets comparing Lightning-based cross-border payment applications to Ripple's on-demand liquidity product with XRP. More players focused on this problem is a good thing for the industry, but let's clear up some misconceptions. Number one, keep in mind that utilizing digital assets is only one component of the on-demand liquidity solution through RippleNet. Uh, our team has built expertise in markets against super hard fiat destination currencies, so Philippines, Mexico, etc., we solved the challenges with liquidity to ramp up hundreds of customers over the year. Crypto over the years, crypto markets have historically been more volatile than fiat, and delivering reliable foreign exchange rates with cryptocurrency liquidity takes time to hone and perfect. As liquidity grows, the entire market becomes more efficient slash cheaper to serve the long tail of destinations that need it most. Fiat on and off ramps are no simple task. Finding and integrating reliable receivers for payouts who want to work with cryptocurrency is very difficult. Ripple has 20 plus ODL markets open and are continuing to push on this lead. Also building redundancy in core markets, so strengthening up those core markets. Regulatory concerns is number three. No surprise here that there are countries where it takes years to get regulators comfortable with cryptocurrency. Last but not least, swapping just the cryptocurrency part of the solution is like suggesting that General Motors just use an Energizer battery and then it will be ready to compete with Tesla. A lot more to consider here. And, you know, we certainly have seen the work that, uh, you know, all of the, uh, the proponents of the XRP ledger have been putting in over the past couple of years and especially more recently with all of the projects that we see. Uh, one of them being on XRP, talking about building out more of an agnostic nature within the ecosystem, bridging over XRP utility into other markets uh on xrp just announced that they are partnering with wrapped finance to create a bi-directional bridge between the xrp ledger and ethereum using the on xrp dex wrapped xrp on on xrp is happening uh, i'm not paid by them to talk about this by the way but i think it's a really cool integration and i'm excited to see where a platform like on xrp goes in the future all right stumbled across this today this is gigantic uh, DTCC, and I, I actually have multiple conversations with people kind of about where crypto is at, where it's going. I talk about some of these uh, organizations and institutions that I had no clue about, you know, four years ago, but that I know uh, very well now, just, you know, a little bit about a, a little bit about a lot of different organizations. And we know how big DTCC is essentially settling uh, quadrillions of dollars on a yearly basis uh, in derivatives. I think 1.2 quadrillion in 2020 was the st uh, statistic that I'm referencing there. Uh, DTCC, uh, Depository and uh, Clearing, uh, building the industry's first prototype to support digital U.S. currency in the clearing and settlement process as part of a digital dollar project effort. Now, this is entitled Project Lithium. So they are trying to obviously allude to the battery aspect, you know, kind of driving the, driving the train, right? Uh, the interesting thing within this, though, is some of the verbiage that we hear, uh, hear here. And... Um, Talking about also exploring how a central bank digital currency could enable atomic settlement right here. A conditional settlement that occurs if delivery and payment are both received at the same time. That sounds familiar, right? Uh, we know that R3 talks about atomic settlement. We know the Interledger protocol certainly references atomic settlement through some Ripple presentations as well. But moving forward, this is in partnership with the digital dollar part, uh, project. So Christopher Giancarlo should certainly ring a bell. Uh, digital dollar project is a collaborative effort that also deals very much so in Accenture, 
I think that we can see this down here. DTCC is developing Project Lithium Pilot in collaboration with the Digital Dollar Project, a nonprofit led by former U.S. regulators, renowned tech leaders, and executives from the consulting firm Accenture. And original funding from Accenture, you know, essentially within the Digital Dollar Project as well. We can dive a little bit into that. Um, Accenture Digital Dollar uh, Project, Christian Carlo launching the Digital Dollar Project, essentially putting out a whole think piece about a year ago stating that XRP isn't a security. Uh, and Christian Carlo is obviously the former CFTC chairman. Moving down here, though, there are relationships within Ripple as well, if I can find it. Yep. Uh, Giancarlo and Balk's firm, which is Wilkes or Wilkie, Farr, and Gallagher, LLP counsel to Ripple Labs. So obviously the law firm is obviously counsel to Ripple Labs. So there are ties there as well. I don't think that I have to go into the weeds too much about Accenture, <clears throat> but Accenture is a RippleNet integrator. Uh, we've seen it multitudes of times. This is the Rice Bank uh, presentation that came out a couple of years ago. Um, and this is basically just saying at the end here, delivered together with Accenture and Ripple. Very interesting to see. Uh, and stumbled across this as well. Accenture designed its own metaverse uh, for employees, complete with exact replicas of offices. So we keep hearing uh, about metaverse. You know, HSBC, um, Hedera Hashgraph, just launching a $150 metaverse fund. Um, DBS, I think Goldman Sachs as well. So... I'm sure that isn't the beginning of where we see kind of the, the rhetoric as far as metaverse is concerned. And not surprising whatsoever because all of these large organizations like to release things in tandem or at the same time. Uh, today as well, we see World Bank Group and Bank for International Settlements talking about exactly what we've been talking about, how it's going to be phrased with this mass adoption when, that, when it does occur. They're going to bring everybody into the same system and they're going to do it by stating that they are empowering everybody and that you're going to... And, and, I'm not saying that they're stating that, and that's not true in some senses. Um, but when you really dig deep into it, they're not going to try to empower any of us um, unless we're already rich. Uh, what they're going to do is the same old, same old, or at least they're going to try to accomplish that. But we can see from the Bank for International Settlements and World Bank Group kind of the rhetoric that's being presented in these think pieces. Central Bank Digital Currency is a new tool in the Financial Inclusion Toolkit. Man, it's great. Um... Before I get into why, you know, kind of that rhetoric is bullshit, I did want to touch base on this. Certainly watching the Bitcoin USD chart, uh, people were, uh, you know, certainly surprised about what's going on, but we've talked about this multiple times. Uh, if we do not see a clear break above the 21 and 50 EMA, uh, and really probably that 51, 51,000 or 5225, 52,250 level, uh, creating a higher low, um, or, you know, it was it was very clear what was potentially going to happen. I was slightly bullish because of the golden ratio multiplier, the price action above. But now we've broken down below. Um, and we do not want to see a cross of the 21 EMA below the 50 EMA. I've talked about this multiple times. The previous times that's happened, uh, you can watch my last video. It's about 90 days until the bottom, except for the March 2020 crash, which was an outlier because everything crashed. Um, 90 days till the bottom, about a 50% correction, which would literally put us right above a uh, previous all-time high of the last market cycle, which is interesting to me as well. I'm not saying either way. I hope the Bitcoin goes up uh, just like everybody else that, that's listening to this right now, uh, because if Bitcoin goes up, then a lot of other digital assets go up as well. Obviously, want to see digital assets with utility start to um, take away market share and then eventually usurp things like proof of work assets, but we will see how long that takes and when it occurs. But I am certain that at some point that that is going to occur. Not financial advice, obviously. Um, this is kind of the thing that really pissed me off today. And I do not participate in Celsius, um, but this is their update for users in the United States. This is a new custody solution that they've basically stated. Um, and there's a lot of changes that are going to impact users. Um, and it, you can read through, the, through these changes. <clears throat> and, the, and the summation of these changes is that, you know, DeFi, uh, you know, they're going to completely try to fuck everybody from participating um, in this market, especially when you're talking about decentralized finance, especially when you're talking about high yield bearing platforms. Um, it's amazing to me that, you know, they don't mind when people are so poor that they have to take, uh, you know, government initiatives um, 
as far as being able to feed their families. They don't mind uh, that people are going out and spending money um, with food stamps on shit food um, and contributing to the obesity problem that exists in the United States. They don't mind when people go out and spend hundreds and thousands of dollars on lottery tickets gambling away theirs and their family's future, but they do mind when you start empowering yourself and they do mind when you have the potential to move up more than one as or more than one um, more than one wealth class throughout your lifetime. You know the, the the old rule for kind of the powers that be is if you're middle class, uh, you shouldn't get to um, upper class throughout your life. You you can get to upper middle class if you work hard and you do all the things you need to do and you go to school and you get into debt. You might be able to die uh, as an upper middle class individual, but when you start talking about wealth and especially generational wealth and all of the mechanisms that are occurring within that. Um, they are not going to allow those things to happen, and it, it's it, it's really shitty in my opinion, but I don't think that this is the first platform we see announcing changes. Um, I was actually logging on to my mobile bank application today. I use USAA, and they asked... This is really weird. I, if you guys have, if you guys use, uh, if, if any of you are like vets uh, and you use USA, and I'm curious if like Navy Federal or any of these other veteran um, branches have done the same thing. I logged on through my mobile application, and it was asking me all these questions about like how much money I expect to transfer into my account, uh, how much I'm going to be using Zelle, how much I'm going to be sending out, and it said if I didn't answer the questions within, I think it was like three days or three attempts, they were going to remove and restrict my online access. This just happened like an hour ago. And I was like, what the hell is this? Um, but here's some of the changes and how it's going to uh, impact Celsius users. Uh, new transfers made by non-accredited investors in the United States will be held in their new custody accounts and will not earn rewards. So yield out the window. Um, they're talking very much so about verified credit, accredited investors in the U.S. being able to do whatever they want adding new coins into their earn accounts where they will continue to earn rewards. Let me just tell you a little bit about what goes into becoming an accredited investor in the United States or being one. So, number one, these are really easy things to accomplish, right? No, bullshit. This is, they're going to subtract out the people that shouldn't be empowering themselves. And it really, really fucking pisses me off. Have a net worth exceeding $1 million individually or combined with a spouse or spousal equivalent. Have earned income exceeding $200,000 or $300,000 if combined with a spouse or its equivalent during each of the last two calendar years. Have certain professional certifications or designations or other credentials on their status as a private funds knowledgeable employee. Now, I don't want to get into the weeds with this too much because it is, uh, you know, how many people actually meet that criteria? Some, you know, the 1% and the 1% is going to continue to get richer, right? But there are side doors. There are things that you can potentially do. Uh, I was going to show this last slide, but I know Eddie had talked to me about this. Uh, her and I are actually, um, among a few other people trying to work out, um, within a platform and within something that we're trying to build here in a way that we try to educate people, uh, that, that, that they know about some of these side doors. One of the things that I will say is that, it, that, you know, and this is super credit to Eddie because she told me this, like, Probably a month ago, I had no idea about it, but you can actually take the Series 65, which I think is about $200 to take, uh, and you can get that side door access. From my understanding, anybody listening to this, please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, into that accredited investor status. So I think it's like 150, 160 question test. Uh, you have to take it at a local test place, etc., study, do whatever you need to do. But there are still side doors right now, and I would certainly be looking into getting into some of those side doors. I am sure Eddie will be talking about this. Um, and I would love to see some of the educational initiatives come out of uh, one of the things that we're working on together. Um, and yeah, it's apologies for apologies for the cursing and the swearing, but this shit really pisses me off. And I don't think that we've seen the end of it. Um, just like I said before, whenever we start seeing you know these these mega banks start announcing the metaverse stuff, and once the first one does it, uh, does it, it's dominoes. When you start seeing people or platforms that have been in discussions with regulators making changes that are this drastic to the business model. Uh, and this is, you know, I don't participate in Celsius, but I know how many people do. It's going to be dominoes. You're going to start seeing this across the board with a lot of DeFi platforms. Anything that is generating um, a lot of yield for you, uh, if you're dealing with it in the United States and they are trying to adhere to the regulatory, whatever guidance they're being given, uh, it's really scary to me because it, it, it kind of removes the entire use case of why a lot of this market exists, right? It's to empower uh, individuals that would 
otherwise not have the ability to empower themselves through traditional financial means, right? Um, and it really fucking pisses me off. And um, it's not surprising, though. I'm not surprised at all. It just really, really pisses me off because a lot of people, um, a lot of people, I'm sure, have changed their lives with a platform like Celsius. Um, and there's a lot, you know, this is just one platform. I can think of many, um, you know, I, you know, this is why we stay on top of the news. This is why we try to put out content on a consistent basis. Um, and we try to do it in as agnostic a way as possible. You know, I talk a lot about XRP and H bar and quant and things like that on this platform, uh, on my platform. doesn't mean that I don't feel for people that are participating in other uh, ecosystems because trust me, I am in a lot of DeFi projects. Um, and you know, it, it, it just, where this goes as far as what they're going to allow for innovation versus what they're going to, <laughs> they, they talk about inclusivity, bringing everybody into the system, right? But if the old guard rules still apply, um, how inclusive is it really? Or is it just kind of the new normal bullshit within um, within the financial uh, sector that has existed for, for decades upon decades? Uh, we're, not, we're not growing if we don't allow, you know, the ecosystems to grow. And I hope that they... I don't know, man. I, I, I hope that I hope that we see some sort of clarity that allows people to participate in some of these mechanisms because I know how just how much it's affected some people. Um, I love all you guys. I will talk to you guys. You know, stay strong out there. Let's try to keep on top of the news. Paying attention certainly to DTCC, what they're doing with Accenture and the Digital Dollar Project. Um, certainly, uh, Ashish Birla. You know that that post about kind of. You know, just assuming that the Lightning Network immediately, you know, kills XRP and on-demand liquidity because they have uh, Shopify integration. Uh, you know, it takes years and years and years to build out these corresponding relationships. It takes years to build out the um, the on and off ramps. It takes years to build out the bridges. You know, just to assume that a Lightning Network still running on Nostro and Vostro is going to upset the al Apple cart versus a neutral bridge asset that has a shit ton of liquidity and a ton of different potential rails uh, is a huge mistake. And I think that it's being a little bit obtuse. So hope you guys enjoy this. I will talk to you guys. Bye.